Disturbing details emerging in the case of an alleged serial rapist targeting women at nightclubs in Denver's Lodome neighborhood. New documents revealing women were drugged before being sexually assaulted. Denver 7's exclusively obtained a search warrant in the case against John Pastor Mendoza. And as Denver 7's Jessica Porter found, the women say not all the assaults took place inside his vehicle. John Pastor Mendoza was charged in October of 41 counts relating to the kidnapping and sexual assault of 10 women. Police say he targeted women leaving nightclubs while working as a Lyft driver, but a search warrant reveals even more sinister details. In his home, police found a cardboard candy box with 18 cell phones and four more cell phones in a laundry basket. They also recovered female underwear and a bank card allegedly belonging to the victims as well as muscle relaxers. The detective in this case believes Pastor Mendoza was keeping the victim's cell phones and underwear as trophies for his crimes. The search warrant reveals detailed accounts of the assaults from six victims between 2018 and 2022. All of them describe ordering a rideshare home, blacking out, and waking up to being assaulted. Many reported their cell phones, wallets, and underwear were missing after the assault. There was evidence the assaults were violent. The victims reported bruises, abrasions, pain, and in some cases, signs of strangulation. One victim said he looked at her as if she was prey, a thing and not a person. Some victims reported waking up alone in a room with no furniture and all of the doors locked. They say Pastor Mendoza would blame them for being too drunk and claimed they were there because he didn't know where to take them home. When police searched Pastor Mendoza's phone, they found a photo of one victim passed out in the back seat of the suspect's vehicle. Four victims consented to a sexual assault exam and DNA was collected. The arrest affidavit says the DNA profile in three of those exams all linked back to Pastor Mendoza, with the fourth victim's results pending. It's important to note that police recovered a total of 22 cell phones and Mendoza was charged with assaulting 10 women. At least two victims told police they did not report being assaulted because they felt guilty and embarrassed. So there is a potential that there are many more victims out there. Reporting live in the studio, Jessica Porter, Denver 7. All right, thanks for your work on that one, Jessica. And detectives were able to link several of these cases in July of this year. Trax Nightclub then provided police with Mendoza's photos, the days he frequented the club, and his license plate. But police did not notify the public to the danger of a potential serial rapist until he was charged in October. And sexual assault is a violent crime and can happen to people of all ages. I looked into these statistics and found a survey from the CDC which shows nearly one in five women and one in 71 men in the United States have been raped. And there are resources in our community to provide assistance. The Blue Bench has a 24-7 hotline. The number is there on your screen, 303-322-7273, with services offered in English and Spanish and can help with reporting assaults, having difficult conversations with family or law enforcement, and just overall support. Aurora police have arrested the brother of a man wanted in connection to four murders last weekend. Juan Angel Castorena was charged with accessory to first degree murder. The department says he's being investigated as an accessory after the fact, but say there is no evidence to indicate he was involved in the shootings. Joseph Castorena, his brother, is still at large. The Weld County Sheriff's Office is using genetic technology to shed new light on one of their oldest cold cases. The investigator in charge tells Denver 7's Amy Wattis he's hoping someone will recognize the victim and come forward. We're trying to shed some more light on the case. November 19th, 1973. The day investigators say the skeletal remains of a woman believed to be between the ages of 23 and 25 were found in Weld County. Nearly 49 years later since the discovery, no one has come forward saying they know who the woman is or how she died. All investigators have is this small binder of information, calling her by the name of Jane Doe. The arrow indicates Riverbank portion where the skull was located. We are standing near the Highway 66 bridge over the St. Vrain Creek, which is about four miles west of Platteville. Investigators say hunters found the skeletal remains of the woman about a half mile north of here. Last week, the Weld County Sheriff's Office shared this post on Facebook, 
saying the woman was around five feet two inches tall. They also posted this picture, a facial reconstruction completed by the Colorado Bureau of Investigation of the woman as she may have looked in 1973. Cold case detective Byron Castellon is trying to shed new light on his oldest cold case, hoping a newer technology the Weld County Sheriff's Office recently started using called genetic genealogy will finally help him find out who this woman was. We provide them with DNA uh, bones like a femur or molar. Mm -hmm. They extract the DNA and then they'll send it to the labs, Authorum or Parabon. Um, for them to do genetic genealogy on that. Castellon says it's up to his partners at CBI to conduct the genetic genealogy, but it was up to him to exhume the woman's remains from Lynn Grove Cemetery in Greeley earlier this year so they could do that. Unknown Platteville skeleton buried 6-18-1974. Once the DNA is extracted from the bones, it's up to CBI to create a family tree that connects relatives to a common ancestor. Castellon says investigators use a website called GEDmatch to try and find those relatives. This website, you can submit your DNA, you know, spit in the tube like Ancestry or 23andMe. That's usually what they use to uh, link to a possible cousin or something like that. Genetic genealogy was used to help crack the high-profile Golden State Killer case. Joseph D'Angelo was sentenced to multiple terms of life in prison without parole in 2020, four decades after he raped multiple women and girls and murdered several people in California. I uh, contacted our coroner's office about Which is why Detective Castellon is hopeful genetic genealogy will help him find new clues or even help solve the 30 cold cases he's currently working on. I'm optimistic in this new technology. I can see the potential of it and how helpful it'll be. Amy Wattis, Denver 7. And if you recognize the woman in this case, you're asked to call the Weld County Sheriff's Office or Northern Colorado Crime Stoppers. Both those numbers there on your screen. The family of Isabella Thales learned today the man who shot and killed their daughter will spend the rest of his life in prison. Isabella, who had just turned 21, was in the ballpark district with her boyfriend, Darian Simon, walking their dog in June of 2020 when a man pulled an AK-47 and shot at both of them, killing Isabella. Now, I spoke exclusively with Isabella's mother after her daughter's death, and her hope was the murderer would spend his life in prison, and that's what the judge ordered today, life in prison and an additional 48 years for the attempted murder of Darian Simon, and he was ordered to pay more than $37,000 in restitution. It took the jury less than a day to find him guilty of murder. A group of 50 migrants and asylum seekers from multiple South American countries arrived in Denver today. Local nonprofit American Friends Service Committee tells us their arrival was coordinated with an El Paso nonprofit. Now, nearly half of those who arrived in Denver are under the age of 18, all here with family. Now, six families will be staying in Colorado long term, and the others will meet with loved ones throughout the United States within the next several days. And going deeper on this, we wanted to distinguish the difference between migrants and asylum seekers. And I looked into the definitions used by Amnesty International. An asylum seeker is someone who left their country seeking protection from persecution and serious human rights violations in another country. Now, there is no accepted legal definition of migrant, but Amnesty understands these people to be people who leave their home country for work, study, join family, or even because of poverty, political unrest, and gang violence. Denver's plan to pay for sidewalk repairs hits a fork in the road. We're failing people each day when folks using wheelchairs can't get to a transit stop. Low-income people cannot tolerate all of these additional new taxes and fees. We're taking a 360 look at one local ordinance on the ballot that could leave homeowners footing the bill. Warmer tomorrow, but also windy high wind warning west of Denver.